welcome back to the lecture series on bioelectricity. So, this is the 25th lecture we are starting. So, as of now, so we are in the animal electricity module. Uh, as of now, we have talked about the electrical phenomena in the nervous system, special senses starting from eyes, ears, nose, tongue, touch, stretch reflexes to the spinal cord, up to the brain, memory, sleep, learning, neurological disorders like Alzheimer's, Parkinson, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, inhibitory excitatory signals, different measurement technique including encephalogram, then uh, patch clamp, microelectrode arrays, field effect transistors and different level of electrical computation what is involved. So, now from here we will move on to the next uh, aspect of animal bioelectricity that is in the case of heart, which is a completely autonomous system which is functioning in order to you know ensure that we are alive. This is one organ which has a very, very interesting um, I should say very interesting electrical phenomena, because it is governed by a set of cells, which whose electrical phenomena are entirely different from the another set of cells. They have a totally different kind of ion channels and we will come to that. So, before we start this uh, cardiac uh, bioelectricity, let us get some idea about the system itself. Okay. So, referring to the slides now. So, if you look at the cardiac electrophysiology and artificial hearts that we will be discussing, a heart usually beats between 60 to 90 times per minute, which is essentially is the pulse rate. So, if you back calculate it, so what essentially that means 100,000 times per day heart is beating and it is pumping around 8000 liters of blood a day. Now, you can imagine for a system to function this for the whole life, what should be the efficiency of this machine? This is not an easy task. So, you are beating like you know 100,000 times. So, nature or the way the heart has evolved, its electrical processes is different from the nervous system and that you will be evident as you will be seeing the action potential generated by the big chunk of those contractile muscle system, which constitute your heart. Okay. So, this is just to give you a feel that you know your heart is doing some amazing task. If your average life span is 70 to 80 years, then this is just a mesmerizing. This is probably one of the most efficient uh, machine you can think of, because this machine cannot afford to take rest, because if it takes rest, then you are in rest forever. Okay. So, coming to the basic structure of it, if you look at that, it is a four chambered structure. If you look at it, something called a left atrium out here it has a right atrium, it is right ventricle, it has a left ventricle. And essentially what happens is this, the right atrium receives, if you could see the diagram from superior vena cava, the right atrium is receiving the all the impure blood, which is coming to the right atrium. Through the tricuspid valves, it moves to the right ventricle, the lower chamber. From there, this is pumped through the pulmonary artery. This is the only artery which carries impure blood by the way. It goes to the lungs for purification. It comes back after getting purified in the lungs through pulmonary vein, the only vein which carries oxygen rich blood. Otherwise, and the only artery, the pulmonary artery carries oxygen deficient blood. So, the, through the pulmonary vein, it comes to the left atrium. 
from the left atrium through the mitral valves, you could see the mitral valves here, it moves to the left ventricle. From the left ventricle through the aortic valve, the blood is pumped through the aorta to rest of the body and this whole process and by the way, the right atrium is receiving blood from both inferior vena cava and superior, superior is coming from the upper part of the body, inferior from the lower part of the body okay. and this whole process has to be synchronized in a very, very well regulated fashion. If there is any error in this, then we are in a big trouble. So, this whole coordination, the way the heart works is coordinated by two interrelated electrical events, two interrelated electrical event, one is the master, other one is the slave and based on them they have the name uh, pacemaker system and a uh, contractile system. Okay. So, we will be coming to that the contractile system how it is being regulated by the pacemaker system we will come in depth, but slowly one by one we will move on to that. So, going back slightly to the next slide. So, this is what I was trying to tell you. So, this is the heart which is receiving sitting in the center out here this is the heart which is receiving from the inferior vena cava, you could see the inferior vena cava bringing the blood, this is the superior vena cava from upper part of the body bringing the impure blood, from the iota it moves to the, from the upper chamber it moves to the ventricles, from the ventricle it moves all the way to the lungs, to the pulmonary artery and from through the pulmonary vein it is coming back and here this whole circuit is taking place. So, there are two distinct circuit in this situation, one is called the pulmonary circuit, the other one is called the systemic circuit. Pulmonary circuit is the circuit which is exclusively between the heart and the lungs. So, the pulmonary artery taking the impure blood to the lungs and the pulmonary vein bringing the oxygen rich blood back to the heart that small circuit. So, coming back to the slides this part of the circuit that this connected circuit between the heart and the lungs is called the pulmonary circuit and then you have the systemic circuit which is the rest, the rest of it is a systemic circuit. Okay. So, these are the two broad circuit and this much anatomy is essential for you to understand. Coming to the next slide. I will recommend you please go through this link, if this link is still functioning, you will be able to see the heart contraction and the blood flow. There is a nice video out there which I, I really cannot put it here, kindly go through it that I have provided the link for you to go through it, it is a really very interesting video, okay. kindly go through this video. So, coming back to the next slide, this is how the heart architecture is. It is kind of a myocardium, it is a layer of tissue because this has to be a really a strong organ because this is 100,000 times per day, this is something. So, this tissue is kind of you know if you see this picture, they are kind of you know as if I, I do not know how many of you have seen this like you know, uh, have you seen this you know the ropes, the ropes are tight. It is almost like if you look at this picture, it will look like as if these ropes are tied and these are the valves, you see these are the different kind of valves which are like you know kind of you know there is a push and then they close like this and likewise. Okay. So, this is to give you a feel about the anatomy, of course we are not going to deal with it at this point, but to just to give you an idea that this is a very very um, well developed with enormous amount of a strength to ensure that the blood continuously flows and continuously it pumps in this whole process. Moving on to the next slide, now this is what I was trying to tell you, there are two circuits which are functioning here, one is called conducting system or which is also in other word called the pacemaker system, the other one is called contractile system. So, if you have to give what are the cellular uh, players of the heart, so the cellular players of the heart include the blood vessels which constitute of the endothelial cells what you could see here, all the endothelial cells which are making the blood vessels. Then you have the cardiac muscle cells, these muscle cells are the contractile system, these muscle cells what you see cardiac muscle cells are the contractile system 
and then you have the conducting system which constitute your pacemaker cells. And in this picture you see this dotted dotted line, the yellow line out here, this is your conducting system. And all these are originated from the cardiac progenitor cell which is mentioned in this picture. Cardiac progenitor cells are the cells which differentiates into contractile element, conductile element of the pacemaker element as well as the endothelial cell. And some of these cardiac uh, progenitor cells are present in the adult heart too, which could be differentiated into cardiac cells. People are attempting the adult cardiac myocytes or adult cardiac progenitor cell to be differentiated into functional cardiac myocytes. So, this is the overall structure of the heart, we will be coming in depth, but these are the key, C, uh, the key cell cellular players of the game. So, if you look at the conducting system, conducting system is looks like, now if you compare this picture with this picture, so this is what I was trying to tell you and the, they have different names, we will we'll be coming to that. So, in a better contrast if you see this picture, so this is what you see this from here, where you see this star kind of thing, from here the electrical impulses originate. To give you an idea what this contracting system and conducting system does. So, before I get in depth, you have to realize that heart is continuously beating okay, without any electrical, without any neural signals. It does not need, it is automatic, it is doing so. In order to do so, there is a circuit which just like a pacemaker, just like an oscillator, it is, it is oscillating like this, tuck, 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 like this. This oscillator circuit is absolutely automatic. It is, this oscillator circuit exists because it has a very unique combination of ion channels, which are totally different from the ion channels we have dealt with. Okay. These oscillatory circuits which are present there, this oscillatory circuit ensures, and so this what you see out here, what I am outlining out here, this is this oscillatory circuit which ensures rest of the heart functions. So, this oscillatory circuit number in, in terms of the number of cells is very, very few with respect to the rest, you can see, I mean how much area the rest of the heart is, how much those cells are constituting. This oscillatory circuit constitute the conducting system or the pacemaker system, and whenever Whenever you hear that somebody is having have an implanted pacemaker, that essentially means that this person's conducting system is in trouble. It means within this circuit there are certain errors. The signal, the oscillatory circuit is unable to send this oscillatory message all across that circuit. Always remember this, this will help you to realize. And when I was telling you in the beginning of the lecture, the master and the slave. So, this conducting system is the master system which regulates the slave system which is the contracting system. So, let us move on to the next slide. So, this is how this whole circuit works. So, this is where if you go back to the previous picture, this is what is called sino arterial node. This is star sign, sino sinus, this is sino arterial node. And from here the electrical impulse is spread, sino arterial node to atrial synctium. So, this is the atrial synctium where it is spreading okay. and there is a rate. So, electrical impulse spreads from the sinus node throughout the left and the right atria. So, those blue lines what you see out here spreading, so the electrical signal is spreading like this. Automatically the right atrium it will spread faster as compared to the left atrium because it will take some time to reach to the left atrium because of the shear distance. Now, this node, this is the, if you again you have to refer to this, so this is called A V node. If this is called S A node, S A node is this one, where my cursor is now, once again, yeah. So, this is where you see this, this is S A node, sino arterial node and this is A V node connected by three connect, three connections, okay, coming back in the from sino arterial node through the atrial synctium through the junctional fibers. So, these junctional fibers are these ones, okay. through the junctional fibers it leads to atrioventricular node which is this A V node 
atrioventricular node from the and the electrical impulse spreads from sinus node throughout the left and the right atria. Now, next what happens from the atrioventricular node which is also called AV node the signal gets split up into two you could see that the signal is kind of you know signal is like this I mean this circuit is moving like this there is a splitting of the circuit you could see in the picture that the circuit is splitting and part of the impulse is reaching the left ventricle and part of it is reaching the right ventricle and this further split up. So, to the left bundle bundle branch which is called bundle of He's He's bundles these are called HIS you could see the arrow showing the He's bundle from the He's bundle to the left bundle branch and the light bundle branch from the AV bundle to the bundle branches to the Purkinje fiber to the ventricular syncytium. So, this is how the spread of electrical impulse happens in the conducting system. This is how it is being coordinated and this happens at a specific frequency continuously this oscillator functions at a specific frequency. Of course, there is an upper and a lower limit of it, but this is how the oscillatory circuit functions and there are sympathetic and parasympathetic control which regulate some of these oscillatory frequencies. But when in this circuit when the, the circuit what I showed you out here whenever there is an error or there is a blockage in any of this part. So, what happens is that signal is not transmitted and that is where you need the intervention intervention of prosthesis that is where pacemaker circuits are to be introduced. Pacemaker is nothing on the surface of the heart or on the body you basically put another oscillatory circuit or, or electronic oscillatory circuit which generates signals to ensure to compensate for the drawbacks of that existing conducting system. So, from here let us move on to the next slide which is slightly more complex slide which will give you an idea about the time window. So, at the 0 0 time point it is starting 0 0.03 and if you if you read through the sinus node sometimes called the sinus arterial node serves as the heart's pacemaker emitting an impulse that result in an action potential. Okay. The cells in the node have almost no contractile element, but are connected directly to the atrial fiber. So, that the action potential spreads immediately into the atrial cardiomyocyte and is transmitted to the entire atrial muscle mass. Okay. So, if you look at this propagation time from 00, 0, 0, 0, 0.003 to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.17, 0 0.18. Likewise, if you if you look at it, so here it reaches at 0.21, whereas at 0.22, just because it has to travel slightly more on that side. Okay, so this is how the signal is moving through, and based on those time number points, you could see how the signal is moving. So again, from sinus node to the AV node from the AV node to the bundle of He's to the left bundle of He's to the right bundle of He's. Once again another video if you will get uh, see whether this video is functional please go through this one. Okay. Now, coming to how these are linked with each other. So, when this conductile system is conducting this thing the electrical impulses moves from so, you have to realize one thing if I go back to some of the very early slides let me go back okay, here. So, there is a sequence of event which is taking place here from the right atrium the blood is reaching both the right, at, right and the left atrium from it is pumped here from here it is pumped to the you know the pulmonary artery likewise. So, this fashion has to be synchronized blood reaching right atrium moving to the right ventricle from the right ventricle it is moving to the pulmonary artery similarly the blood coming from the left atrium coming to the left atrium to from the pulmonary veins moving to the left ventricle and being pumped to the rest of the body. This whole process has to be coordinated in a very systematic fashion there has to be a system by which you can coordinate that. So, what essentially the conducting system does is the conducting system the electrical impulses which are generated by the conducting system here are transmitted to the contractile system 
these are the contractile system or the cardiac myocytes what you see here. So, these are the membrane potential of the or the action potentials of the SA nodes or the conductile system and they spread to the heart muscles which are the these are the heart muscles. So, these are the action potentials of the pacemaker and these are the action potentials of the cardiac myocytes AP stands for the action potential. Now, what is ECG and EKG how it is linked to the conductine and contractile system of the heart this is one of the fundamental question which you know. So, coming back to the action potential of pacemaker. So, first of all what we will be doing we will be talking about the action potential of the pacemaker cells because there are two kinds of action potential you could see here. This is one set of action potentials which are generated by the contact conducting system and there is another set of action potential generated by the contractile system. So, first of all we will talk about the membrane potential of the conducting system and then we will be talking about the action potential of the contractile system. Okay. So, coming back to the action potential of the pacemaker cells. The pacemaker cell or the conducting system action potentials it is very interesting. So, here to realize that these pacemaker cells do not have sodium channels. So, as of now in the nervous system whenever we have talked about action potentials. So, what essentially we have talked about is the action potential is started a cell sets at minus 70 or minus 60 or minus 70 or minus 80 millivolt from there some impulse comes some ligand comes and binds or some light falls on it and the membrane potential shifts to say minus 40 minus 50 from there it is all an non -non action potential is generated. But then in the case of cardiac myocyte uh, uh, pacemaker cells the story is totally different. These cells do not do not mark my word very carefully do not sit at minus 80 they sit somewhere around minus you know minus between minus 40 between minus 40 and minus 50 they are spontaneously active they do not need any electrical impulse they do not need any kind of you know uh, something to pull them. So, if you see the graph now you will see they are sitting at around minus 40 okay, around minus 40 and minus 50 they are spontaneous this activity is spontaneous. So, essentially they do not have they have they because they have slow inward current unlike unlike their counterpart in the neurons where there is a fast activating sodium current they have slow sodium current and they have a voltage gated calcium conductances. These are mostly regulated by the calcium conductances and they sit out here and from here they can overshoot they overshoot 0 you see the action potentials. So, these are the 0 is the depolarization phase as opposed to the ventricular muscle action protein you will see the difference between it okay, and the phase 3 is the repolarization phase. So, if you look at the monophasic action potential of the cardiac myocyte. So, this is what is happening they are sitting at around minus 50 or minus 40 between minus 40 and minus 50 out here in the phase 4 slow sodium influx very slow sodium influx followed by a calcium influx followed by a potassium efflux and they come back and again they goes back because of the so sodium influx. If you look at it as opposed to if you look at it because of the slow inward current of sodium and a voltage gated increase in calcium conductance via T channels there is a spontaneous depolarization which is taking place. And if we in this picture so if they if this is the whole thing then the green green line is showing the complete process. So, this these are the individual ionic conductance you see calcium and there is a slow inward sodium. So, it is the calcium which is the game changer. So, these cells do not sit at so one of the take home message from this is these cells do not sit at minus 80 millivolt they are sitting at minus between minus 40 and minus 50 millivolt and they are spontaneously active because of the slow activating because of the slow moving sodium channels and coupled with a high percentage of calcium channels. So, they are spontaneously active throughout their life. So, this is how the conducting system is automatically spontaneously function like an oscillatory circuit they oscillate like this. Okay. 
So, this is the monophasic action potential of cardiac by a pacemaker cell. Now, moving on to the action potential velocities, if you if you look at it, the thyroid, these are the different conduction rates. So, these cells now in order to understand this, what you have to, to go back to this picture out here. So, at the different part of this circuit, there are different kind of pacemaker cells and they have different properties. Okay, depending on because since I have covered the anatomy, now if you see this table that will give you an idea that at the SA node their conduction velocity is 0 0.05 meter per second, then at interarterial pathway it is 1, this is far more higher and in the Purkinje cells it is even much more higher. So, these different velocities in actually ensures that they have different concentration and different kind of ion channels, but they all sit at between minus 40 and minus 50 millivolt action um, membrane potential, so that they are spontaneously active. Okay. Now, what about the action potential of the cardiac myocytes? We have talked about the conduction system, we have not talked about the contractile system. Let us look at the contractile system now. Now, we are moving on to the contractile system and I have already shown the connection between the contractile and the conduction system out here. So, these on the right hand side these uh, violet color are the conduction system and this whole process is the conduction system. Okay. Now, coming back to the contractile system, so, cardiac myocytes can be divided into work cells and pacemaker cells. Okay. The work cells have a large stable resting membrane potential just like their neuronal counterpart the contractile system sits at minus 70 minus 80 millivolt okay, and displays a prolonged action potential with there is a difference of course, which you will come across. And whereas, if you compare in the red the pacemaker cells have a smaller unstable resting potential and spontaneously depolarize generating intrinsic this is very important to note intrinsic electrical activity of the heart pacemaker cells are found in the sinoarterial node and the and the atrioventricular <coughs> AV nodes, cells of the bundle of He's and some Purkinje cell are also capable of spontaneous firing. Be very careful reading through these lines, because this is the most characteristic feature. Your contractile system follows the membrane potential of the neurons minus 70 minus 80, whereas your pacemaker system do not sit there, they are spontaneously intrinsically active. Okay. Coming moving on to the next slide, how the cardiac myocytes looks like? These are the contractile element, this is how they look like. If you take the cross section, this is derived from several people who have patterned them and you know they have grown them in a specific pattern, that is how they look like. And they are all you see these lines, they are all connected with each other using gap junctions gap junctions are kind of you know between two cells there are connectivity. So, automatically this whole structure does not need to have the synaptic connection between individual cells. They are all connected with each other using pipe like structures and those pipes are called gap junction gap junctions. So, between two cells there is a physical physical pipe which is connecting one cell to another cell likewise. Okay. So, these cardiac myocytes or the work cell or the contractile cell whichever we want to express it as long as you understand the whole concept. They their morphology is something like this what do you see. Okay. Now, from here now let us see the monophasic action potential of the cardiac myocyte. So, again see it is sitting at minus 90 millivolt there is fast activating sodium current which essentially overshoots 0 at plus 10 millivolt okay. plus 10 millivolt this is the difference between cardiac myocyte and other neuronal third types. This is where you see there is a lot of calcium ions which influx taking place out here. This is very interesting lot of calcium getting in and it holds the cell at the positive potential for a prolonged period of time. Why is it so possibly because these cells have to do their activity for all your life, all your life. So, this is the zone where they are in a kind of you know they are not physically you know contracting there is kind of you know slows down there is a you know this is kind of you know they need some time to recover all the channels and everything. 
this is this phase, this Plato phase what you see lot of calcium and potassium moving in along with potassium, because this is the this is the zone where there is in the neuronal cell we observe that there is an entry of only potassium, but here you see there is a huge entry of calcium along with it. Okay. This is the zone which ensures the cell comes remains in a slightly rest situation and then it shoots the next action potential, because it has to continuously shoot action potential. Okay. So, moving on to the next slide. So, this is what is happening okay. entry of sodium, entry of calcium, then potassium is going out and this is further bringing it back and this whole process is taking 300 milliseconds. Now, if you compare this 300 millisecond with other neuronal types, you realize that this is far bigger as compared to other neuronal cell types. Okay. Now, moving on to the next, it is a membrane current that generates a normal action potential. So, these are the different component. So, if you go through it, this is this has been taken from American Heart Association as a, it has been acknowledged. So, you will see from the resting potential which is at minus 80, these are the different components okay. potassium component, sodium component, you know, calcium component and several other and the different pacemaker how they are regulating this whole process, the membrane current that generate a normal action potential. So, that general normal, uh, so there is a resting, there is an upstroke, there is an early depolarization, there is a plateau phase and there is a final repolarization phase. Okay. Kindly go through this very carefully, because I mean this is going to you know enrich your understanding about how the heart is functioning. From here back to if you remember while I was talking oh, I talked to you about the rhinodyne receptor and um, dihydropyridine receptor. So, action potential leads to the motion or movement of the sliding sliding motion which is regulated by the sarcomere. So, this is what you see the electrical impulses leading to the movement of the muscle through the excitation contraction coupling apparatus and which mostly involve the rhinodyne receptors. And uh, this has a lot of uh, this, this is of immense importance in the pharmacology, there are a lot of disorders which are observed in that rhinodyne receptors. This is what you see, this is where it is happening, this is where the action potential travel and this is the zone where the rhinodyne dihydropyridine. So, electrical impulses coming and electrical impulses leading to the excitation of these muscle cells and this is where dihydropyridine and rhinodyne receptors are present and they lead to the efflux of the calcium in this, these are both are calcium channels of course, this calcium leads to the contraction of the muscle in the sarcomere. So, this is, this is, this is a site of hot site of pharmacological interest. Okay. So, coming back again we are superimposing some of the tracings of the calcium transient calcium and these are the traces of the calcium recording. So, if you remember while I was covering the last lecture of the nervous uh, bioelectricity, I talked to you about imaging calcium, the waves of calcium which are moving through and heart is a very prominent organ there uh, where this kind of waves of uh, calcium waves are being studied in greater in, in greater details. So, this is one such example where it has been shown, I have given you the reference also, you can go through the reference that will help you. Okay. And this is exactly the reason why I introduce, this is what you see are the calcium influxes which are moving through, you are imaging calcium. Okay. So, if you see, so what you see that YOLO thing, this is the wave which is moving through a cardiac myocyte. This was, was I was trying to highlight in the nervous bioelectricity that there are calcium imaging techniques which are being used. So, near here you can see how the calcium imaging is being done. So, you have dyes which changes their color with the influx of calcium and you, what you are measuring is that change in color in the form of a wave. You see there is a and this is time 0, 866, 133, 265 and these are the seconds okay. at different seconds how the calcium wave is generating. So, from here change 
see the changes here, it becomes more intense, more intense, more intense and it becomes really intense as it moves through and it is now dying out. Okay. So, this is moving through, moving through the cell a wave moves through like this. Okay. So, this wavy motion is the calcium wave what I was trying to highlight. So, if you do a comparison now of the action potential, this is what I have giving you an action potential comparison. I told you this is almost 300 milliseconds. Okay. Now, look at the contraction of a skeletal muscle, which is far less, it is nothing for a skeletal muscle contraction. So, there are two muscle type with a totally, totally different action potential and as a matter of fact, a smooth muscle if I could have added here, it, please go through all the referred reference textbook, you will see the smooth muscle also have a different kind of action potential pattern. So, it is the time. So, if you compare it, cause the sodium entry duration 3 to 5 seconds ends with the closure of voltage regulated fast sodium channels, then comes the plateau where the causes calcium entry duration almost of 175 milliseconds ends with the closure of the calcium channels, repolarization where potassium loss starts and then of course, followed by that you have this uh, the sodium potassium ATPase pump calcium pumps and everything comes into play, which ensures to pull back the calcium and getting the getting the sodium out and getting the potassium in. Okay. So, this is a comparative picture, which I wish you people really go through very, very carefully, because this is going to re help you to realize how the heart functions for all your life, because the act, all your this skeletal muscle does not have to function all the time when there is an impulse it function that is it, it has a lot of time to take rest, but your heart does not have any time to take rest, it has to continuously function. Okay. Kindly go through this very, very carefully. Now, a comparison of the action position generated by the pacemaker and the ventricular cardiomyocyte, it could be this is it is written ventricular cardiomyocyte, it could be the, the upper chamber cardiomyocytes also. So, if we compare it the work cells or the cardiac or the cardiac myocytes, they have a larger stable resting membrane potential, MP stands for membrane potential, whereas pacemaker cell have a smaller unstable membrane potential, action potential in terms of action potential, they have prolonged AP stands for action potential with a plateau, whereas pacemaker cells are spontaneously depolarized, generate intrinsic electrical activity of the heart. Okay. Location right and left atrium and the ventricles, whereas pacemaker cells are found in the SA node, AV node, bundle of He's and Purkinje fibers. Iron movement, sodium, calcium and potassium movement. In contrast of the cardiac myocyte action potential, there is no fast inward movement of sodium ions during, you could you should add this word fast movement of sodium ions during depolarization. This is the overall comparison between the two. And in terms of the diagram, if you look at it, look at where they are resting, this is resting at minus 80, this one is resting at between minus you know, somewhere between minus 40 and minus 50 and these are the different phases what I have already highlighted. If you go through those phases, it is it's very fairly clear and the impulses which are generated from this oscillator circuit is being used by used to activate the cardiac myocytes which are present there. Okay. So, this comparative picture is very, very essential for you people to you know kind of you know take in mind that you know how beautifully this whole system is synchronized. Because as of now we are talking cellular level and afterward we will talk about the EKGs where this is the overall electrical activity because of these two processes which are working hand in hand. So, now comes the question what is ECG or EKG and how it is linked with conducting contractile system of the heart. So, I okay, will close in here with this lecture, in the next lecture we will start from here. Okay. So, to summarize what we have learned as of now. So, we have dealt with the anatomy of the heart, we have talked about the different cell types of the heart, we have talked about uh, two different contract conduct the uh, two different electrically electrical elements the contractile system and the conductive system, where conducting system is acting as the master and contractile system is acting as the slave 
and the impulse generated by the oscillator of the contractile conducting system is transmitted to the conducting contracting system and we have made a comparison between the electrical properties of both of them. So, I will close in here in the next class we will talk about the ECG and the EKG. Okay, thank you.